Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today, I am reviewing the Jay-Z Mics Vintage 67. This is a FET condenser mic, and it costs about $1,200, but Jay-Z does frequently have sales. I bought this for $600 back in 2020. If you are interested, I'll have a link in the description down below. Also, all of my recording settings will be listed in the doobly-doo as well as the description. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. What a surprise. You are going to get the microphone. You get the microphone mount, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, and the warranty information and documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I don't have any serious complaints about this. It has an all metal body. The metal mesh grill does have a bit of give to it, so you will need to be careful there. As we move around the microphone, there are no buttons or switches. On the bottom, you have the XLR port. Next to that, you have the ball mount, which is 5 8 inch. And if you care or not, this is handmade in Latvia. I'm not going to read all of the specs to you, but I will have them up on screen in case you want to pause and take a closer look. But I'll also have them all listed in the description to make it easy to find them. So go ahead and look if you want to. Now I am spinning around the V67 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear. Continuing to the second 90 degree angle, there we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now let's see how this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect while trying not to clip, and here is how it's sounding. Now here is how it sounds six inches away, pointed at the corner of my mouth. Now here is how it sounds one foot away. Here is how it sounds two feet away from my mouth. And here is the V67, four feet away from my stupid face hole. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now this is the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the V67 sounds about 6 inches away from my mouth in a fairly well treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds about 6 inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated space. Now I want to see how effective the microphone and provided mount are at rejecting shocks, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Also, because I'm annoying, I am going to tap on the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now let's see how this microphone sounds running through some higher end outboard preamps. To do that, I have the V67 running through a mic splitter. That is then running into the Universal Audio LA610 Mark II and the Neve Portico 5017. The LA610 Mark II has the EQ off and the compressor bypassed. Gain is set at plus 10. Level is set at 2. The Portico 5017 does have silk engaged but the compression is bypassed and the input gain is set at plus 36 dB. Both preamps are then running plus 4 dBU line level into the Universal Audio X8, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. I level match them as close as I possibly can in the analog realm, and I will have been switching back and forth. That ought to have been enough for you to get a good feel for it. Let's move on. Now, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a couple other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hear how it sounds within the context of the market. Starting on the Vintage 67, 6 inches off, running into the Universal Audio X8 with my gain set at 36 decibels, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, let's jump to the first mic. 
Starting on the Audio-Technica AT2020, I am 6 inches off of this thing, gain still set at 36 dB. This costs about $100, and here is how it compares to the V67. Back on the Jay-Z Vintage 67 for a palate cleanser, here is how it sounds. Let's go to the next microphone. Now I am on the road NT1 5th Gen, 6 inches off, gain still set at 36 dB, check the lower third. This microphone goes for about $250, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Jay-Z and do a whole bunch more comparisons. All right, I am back on the Jay-Z Mics Vintage 67. Nothing has changed. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post, and let's go to another mic. Now I am on the Shure KSM32, 6 inches off, gain still set at 36 dB, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs about $650, and here is how it sounds compared to the Jay-Z, which I got for $50 less. Let's jump back and do some more. Here we are, back on the Vintage 67 again to clear out your ear canals with my voice, gross. Let's go ahead and hear the next microphone. Now I am on the Jay-Z Mics Vintage 11, so the brother or sister or sibling to the V67. I am 6 inches off, gain still set at 36 dB. This microphone goes for about $900, and here is how it compares to that one. Yep, let's do some more. Query, if I didn't tell you, would you know that we are back on the Vintage 67? Because we are, here is how it sounds. Let's go to the next one. Next, I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, TLM 103, 6 inches off, gain at 36 decibels, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. This microphone costs about $1,200, and here is how it compares to the Jay-Z Mics Vintage 67. That is enough of that. Let's jump back and do three more comparisons. I believe we have three more to go, so this is the Vintage 67. I'm not going to ramble on. Here is how it sounds. Let's go to another one. Next, I am on the Austrian Audio OC818 on the cardioid polar pattern with no pad and no filters. Six inches off, gain still set at 36 dB. I will have to boost this a little bit more. This microphone costs about $1,250, and that's enough talking. Here is how it compares to the Jay-Z. Let's go back and do a couple more. All right, penultimate palate cleanser time. So here is the Vintage 67, 6 inches off, gain at 36 dB, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. I think I got everything. Let's go to it. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI on the cardioid polar pattern with no pad and no filters engaged. I am 6 inches off. I decreased my gain to 32 decibels because this is such a hot microphone. This goes for about $3,700, so a lot more than the Jay-Z, but this is a control. Here is how it sounds. Let's go back to the Jay-Z and do one final comparison. What could it be? We have one final microphone to go. You all know what it's going to be, so here is your final palate cleanser on the Vintage 67. Let's jump to it right now. I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U67 reissue, 6 inches off, cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter, 32 decibels of gain, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. I think I got everything. This is a tube microphone, and if I am not mistaken, this is the sound the V67 is going for. Does it get close for $6,000 less? Because this microphone costs $7,900. That's a lot of damage. But that should be enough talking for you to get a good feel for this and understand if the V67 is at all close to the sound of this mic. Let's go ahead and jump to the music test now. <laughs>
could avoid you I know that you will be the death of me But you're all I want You haunt my dreams You are all I wish I'd need Guess what it's about? Take a wild guess! It's another song about pizza. I don't miss it at all. Eating healthy doesn't suck. Hey, I'm in a town called Denial. <laughs> Let's go to the conclusion. So I like how this microphone sounds, but a U67, it's not. And first up, as far as pros, it has a self noise of only 6 dBA, which is awesome. I also found the off axis coloration to be fairly inoffensive, and I thought it performed pretty nicely in the untreated room. But then as far as cons, I didn't think the microphone did the greatest job at shock rejection, and because of the odd shape, it's not going to fit in any kind of universal mount, so that's something you need to be hyper aware of. Also, because of the design with the mount directly next to the XLR port, it can be difficult to place this sometimes because the XLR port can be blocked if you're using a stereo bar, an ISO cab mount, or sometimes the knobs on a boom arm. And finally, I know I'm getting a bit nitpicky, but I did hear a bit of resonance on this thing. It is certainly not the worst that I've heard, but because it's there, I need to point that out. And now, what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Jay-Z Mike's Vintage 67? As far as the overall sound, I would say that it's relatively balanced. You get some nice support in the bass and low mids without it sounding muddy. The mids are open and clear without sounding scooped. And then you get this really nice detailed top end, but the top end does come across a little bit sharp sometimes. And because of that, I think this is much more akin to something like the TLM 103 as opposed to the U67 which is just the smoothest sweetest top end ever it just doesn't have that character on the electric guitar I think it offers a balanced sound with a nice amount of detail up top on the acoustic guitar it has some really nice support in the bass and low mids the mids are nice and clear and open and not congested and then you get this great articulation off of the strings for singing vocals again i think it offers this really nice balanced sound but then you get this sheen up top without it sounding over boosted so for that application i think it works really nicely and finally, for spoken word, I think it works quite nicely because you do get that heft in the low end, but it's not overpowering and it's not muddy or unclear. The mids are open, it's not scooped, it's not nasally or congested, and then you get a not overly bright top end, but the top end isn't the smoothest. Because of the upper frequencies, I found myself preferring the Jay-Z Vintage 11, it is just a bit more flattering for a harsher voice like mine. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Jay-Z Mics Vintage 67? Kind of. I think it's a fine sounding microphone and I got tones that I really liked for the electric guitar, the acoustic guitar for singing and for spoken word. So if you don't have any concerns about excessive shocks, if you don't have any concerns about the XLR port being blocked by a stereo bar, on a boom arm, or in an ISO cab, then I think that it's a perfectly workable and really nice sounding mic. However, at $1,200, this thing has so much competition. At that price point, people are looking at their Grail microphones. And at $1,200, I like it, but I don't love it. At $600, I think this is a great deal. And that is why I am saying that I kind of recommend it because if you love the sound of this thing and those drawbacks aren't an issue for you, I would say hold off, don't spend $1,200, maybe wait for a deal to see if you can get a better price. All right, that is it for this review. Did you know we have a Discord server? Podcastage.com slash Discord. Go join and talk microphones and audio gear and hang out with your fellow people. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big ol' thumbs down. Thank you to the members for their support. It allows me to buy the gear to review it. I will talk to you later. I love you. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa, boop.